Hello everyone, this is Brady. So today we're going to make these uh, flower instances. And, uh, and in fact, previously I've already recorded a one hour long video talking about... Actually, I didn't really talk about that. I think it was a live noting. Uh, so I, and it's not voiced. And uh, most of the time I was doing is actually to fix the presets because I, initially I was trying to use one preset to achieve the function. And later I realized, eh, actually it's not right. I need to use another preset. So I have to fix, I have to change the method to fix that and doing a lot of other stuff. So yeah. So today we're going to use the presets to do this function. So on one side it's uh, to to make the tutorial. On the other hand, it's to test the function of these presets. So let's start. Once we have the leaves, let's go to noting, and uh, I'm going to create uh, probably whatever geometry. Uh, let's add a geometry modifier on the top of our original stuff, and we will see what will happen. So to make a kind of uh, flower, it's uh, very common you just to use a spiral, spiral, spiral curve spiral and you look at this curve. This is the curve we generated, so let's bevel curve so that you can see that better. Okay, and uh, we're going to delete the height. And the uh, start radius should be zero, something like zero, and then something like, a, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably just to resample that, so that I know the count. Otherwise, the resolution will it means you will change the vertices amount based on the length of your curve or something like that. It's kind of a little bit awkward. Uh, once we have done that, let's just uh, take a um, point, uh, in point instances. Then our we are going to instance our original paddles. We also need to take the normal. So align ruler to vector. Take the normal. Then this is what we're getting. <clears throat> I'm going to try different axes. Mm. Can I actually also try tangent? And probably combine XY, uh, vector rotate. Uh, no, 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 rotate ruler. <laughs> and local just to make sure it's kind of local so now we have this flower being made uh, i'm going to change this uh, end radius a little bit so that's yes so now we have this flower and uh, let's add a solidify modifier solidify modifier so that we have some thickness okay so now we have this more like a instead of a flower it's more like a bowl but I think it will be fine. Depends on yes. And here, try to rotate and uh, see how things change. Okay. So I think this is the the desired looking of this whole setup. Yeah, something like that. And you can change this kind of uh, bending uh, system. And uh, yes, so this is not really perfect at this moment because of various reasons. For example, the count, the spreading, uh, rotation. But I think. Uh, as a kind of preliminary result, this is kind of acceptable. You can tweak a lot more values, but I would say this is probably good as a preliminary result. So here, what uh, we're going to do is to instance this spiral first. And uh, to instance this spiral, let's first create a grid so that we can instance uh, distribute point on that. So distribute the points on faces, connect the geometry, and then we just uh, probably just visualize that. Let's take a set point radius so that we can see these kind of points clearly. 
So let's increase the size. I'm going to increase the grid maybe to 5.5. Five. Uh, very important thing is you really need to be cautious with all these kind of counts of points. Uh, although I don't think uh, instancing our flower will be very heavy, but sometimes you just need to be cautious because other times I'm instancing trees or something like that. And then to remove this kind of a, how should I say? To remove the intersection, I try to increase the distance minimum. And just to give several examples should be good enough for the moment um, because this is more like kind of for demonstration purposes at the moment. Okay, so once we have this, we just point instance. And then we're going to instance this kind of resampled spines into the instances. And immediately we do not really see anything because uh, it's just a spline which is not being shown. So use this uh, bevel curve so we can actually see the spline being generated, which is actually very tiny. Um, but the next step is to put this, so put this curve, uh, use this curve to replace the points that we used to generate our flowers and then instance of flowers. Immediately we have large flowers be instanced. I'm going to take a value to turn this scale down. Okay, so this is fine and this is how our node tree looks like at this moment. You can organize it better. Uh, for example, move them up or something like that. But essentially, yeah, this is what we're having right now. Okay, so this is our flower, and uh, still with the single factor, we can actually determine if this flower is open or closed. So here next, uh, we're going to dis uh, animate this opening and the closing of our flowers while discussing the issue that we are going to encounter. So because this factor is controlling opening and closing, what we can potentially do is to take a directional fall and uh, this node has been improved. So in the past, you always have to put a position vector into the vector section so that you can evaluate. But now this process has been automatic unless you want to have a custom vector. So nowadays you do not need to input anything. You directly select any kind of empties, the object that you want to evaluate. Uh, I'm going to lock this panel and I'm going to change the empties into the into the arrows so that I know which one is x-axis. Okay, and then plug the fourth into factor. Immediately we see all flowers is closing. This is actually pretty abnormal if you have seen many of my tutorials in which I'm using this directional fourth. And by playing around this directional fourth, we still do not really see any kind of effect unless we pass this middle point. So for some reasons, that this middle point is the only way to evaluate all these kind of flowers. And uh, yes, so in this case, I cannot really distinguish flower one, flower uh, two, flower three. So there is no differentiation. I just open and close at once, which is not really interesting because I do not need a fall to do that. I can directly animate this factor. Here, I have to say, I'm not 100% sure why this happens. Uh, I'm also pretty confused at some level, uh, I have to be honest. Uh, but uh, maybe you check the viewers, you can know why, where this autistic composition is located. But in this case, I'm going to realize the instances. And then by animating that, oh, okay, still not. Uh, then by animating this fourth, then I can see this kind of differentiation of opening and closing. And this is exactly what we want. Uh, just to note that although we are realizing the instances, but uh, the final instance with all this kind of pedal is still uh, not being realized. And this is very good because if you realize that, then you really are giving, going to have maybe 2000 vertices in your scene and the node tree will be very heavy. So in this case, this is this is, sounds like, oh, I realize the instances, but it's just in a stage which is not very relevant or not hurting the performance very much. Okay, so this is, this is very good. But uh, the problem that we realize is that the 
the float range values has been disrupted and this is the issue that we actually encounter in such a kind of case and that's why I added an option which is called a loop each instance uh, once you just tick this button you immediately get all this kind of recovery while you are able to actually animating the whole things uh, this sounds to be very easy but actually building this preset is such a pain to improve <laughs> <laughs> That's why actually last time I spent one hour really just to investigate these whole things. And uh, last time I was only just uh, completing half of that. <laughs> so I spent my extra time just to uh, complete another mode because I really think uh, stop value is very uh, useful. Uh, so I want to add a stop mode in addition to the step mode that I created during the noting. <laughs> so this is it. Uh, actually this is all yet. <laughs> Here, let's discuss a little bit more with this setup. Uh, for example, the scale. Uh, here, we're using a single scale to control the size of all flowers. That's why they are of the same size, sometimes very uh, not really interesting. So I would like to keep a little random size. Uh, instead of using the random value nodes, I'm going to use the preset which is called randomness. So the issue of random, I've discussed the many in my animation nodes tutorial why I hate this kind of random nodes is because you have to change two values to control the average but if you're using the randomness you're using a single average to control the entire size instead of two values okay um, in this case however there's a problem that different paddles are of different size because by the custom ID is automatically using the index and uh, we have about 220 index so generating 220 in uh, different values for our paddles. Sometimes I think this is what you want. So you can turn down this uh, average or even de delete this average and uh, turn off this relative to average. So you generate this kind of variances a little bit. Uh, yeah, something like that. Or what you can essentially do uh, is to do a index converge. So here let's increase them size. So the index converge to redecide all this kind of uh, index converge to redecide their custom ID. So basically, the problem is once you're realizing the instance, all these kind of instances are being treated as the same objects or single mesh. So they lose the concept of instances completely. So in your eyes you may think oh this flower is a flower uh, this is a flower that is a flower but uh, the computer no longer thinking this way he think this entire thing is a single whatever stuff okay so this index converge is basically retelling the computer that uh, this group of petals are a single flower and uh, this group of petals are a second flowers uh, so in this case we are basically using the same geometry so loop at instances and these instances here are these kind of 22 points because each flower is composed of 22 points and take this uh, index per instance into custom ID so now we can actually see that the entire whole flower is being increased its size or decrease in the size accordingly so this is the usage of that uh, there should be a bug actually I realize uh, but it may not be very obvious hmm? oh yes I found the bug here the, this is uh, the reason of how I constructed the, this kind of uh, implicit uh, ID so in this kind of case I think the easiest way to resolve that is just to add one so that now you resolve all the problem everything has been um, synchronized uh, you can definitely just add a uh, keep adding the math so let's add some um, pedal math maybe 0 0.1 to the values without index converge so you keep a little bit of variances between pedals but you also uh, have a kind of general control of these uh, flower sides kind of stuff it's just the uh, you can deal with them by yourself okay so these are this is yet oh and of course you can also deal with the size of pedals 
some people mentioned that I wanted these kind of outer pedals being larger than the inner pedals. And this is where you can use this float range and repeat the same process. So let's add a, another uh, another add 